Is it okay to be afraid? It's normal. But do not stay fearful. You will not experience God's availability, God's power, God's faithfulness until you learn to get on your knees and pray. Unleash God's power, pray. Now, why is this topic so important? We all believe God is powerful, yes or no? You all believe that there are things in your life that you need God's divine intervention, yes or no? We all believe God is almighty. The problem is this. How do you connect the reality of God's power into your life? into your own personal struggle. Many times, God to us is a theory. You study the Bible, you know God is almighty, but you don't experience his power. You believe that God is love, but you don't really experience his love. I want us to go deeper this year. Not just head knowledge, but really heart, that you will experience the reality of who God is. He loves you. And he has great plans for you, but God knows you cannot live the Christian life on your own. That is why prayer is so important. Prayer is really communion with God. We limit it to asking. For people, prayer is asking. When I have a problem, I will pray. Ladies and gentlemen, prayer is deeper than that. Prayer is entering God's presence. Prayer is worship. Prayer is listening. Prayer is intimacy with God. Everybody read this from Philips. If man is man and God is God, to live without prayer is not merely an awful thing. It is an infinitely foolish thing. You see, prayer is really humbling yourself. You are saying, Lord, I need you. I don't know about you, but I really need the power of God in my life. I cannot live the Christian life on my own. You need God's power. So the one thing that, is, that the disciples asked Jesus, do you remember? What is the one thing they asked him? Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus was prayerful. If you read the Bible, he prays early in the morning. He prays at night. He's usually alone praying. The Bible tells us after Jesus finished praying, he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, everybody read, Lord, teach us to pray. So the disciples asked Jesus, teach us to pray. I realized prayer is something that is so powerful that you and I need to learn. So my prayer is that you and I will become men and women of prayer prayer. And your Christian life will never be the same. Don't be satisfied with your spiritual level now. I want to go deeper to really learn to know who God is and how to pray. Now, he gave them an amazing format. It is expanded in Matthew. Let's look at Matthew chapter 6. How do you pray? Let's read together. When you are praying, everybody read now, when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do. They suppose they will be heard for their many words. You know, the problem with why many people do not really get excited about prayer, maybe it's your past experiences. You know, we are so busy or we think of prayer as something ritualistic. You keep repeating certain statements, certain words, and prayer become a chore. It is no longer exciting. You know why? Because you are thinking of prayer as something legalistic. So you go through certain words, you repeat again and again. That's not how you should pray. That's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying this is how you should pray. By the way, prayer is more than a duty. You should consider prayer as a delight. From duty to delight. From a burden to a privilege. You know why? You will discover why. But let me explain. So do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. So 
how should you pray if God knows already? Ah, let's read the next verse. Pray then in this way. The idea is pray in this pattern. There's nothing wrong with memorizing the Lord's Prayer. The problem with calling it the Lord's Prayer, it is not really the prayer of Jesus. It is what Jesus taught us how to pray. Jesus that does not have to pray this prayer. Can I tell you why? Because Jesus will never say, forgive me as I've forgiven others. Because Jesus never committed sin. So that is not the prayer of Jesus. Comprende? But that is what he taught us how to pray. So pray in this pattern. So you begin by our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Everybody, so that you will know how to pray, you begin with God. Okay, so focus on God. Everybody, point to God. Heaven, two hands up. Okay, you know why? So you will forever remember when I pray, I must begin by focusing on God. Say that with me. Focus on God. After you focus on God, it's okay. Now slowly don't hit your neighbor. Then I can pray for others, for myself, for problems. Is that okay with you? So how do you pray? First, focus on God. The first thing he wants you to learn about prayer is God is our Father. Notice he says, our Father. This is revolutionary. Because the Jewish people, while they pray, they don't really consider God as their Father. You see in the Old Testament, the fatherhood of God is mentioned 15 times more or less, and it refers to the father of nations, the father of Israel, but never as a personal father. In the New Testament, Jesus revealed to us who God is. God is our father. Wow, what does that mean? And here is the sad part. Many of us, I won't say majority, but many of us did not grow up with a father. I was shocked when I studied the statistics of absentee father. Do you realize in the Philippines, 25% of young people do not grow up with a father? It's single parenting. And 90% of single parents, 90% is the mother. There's no father. Worst of all, many of you probably grew up with a father who is abusive. Not only absentee, maybe present, but emotionally abusive. So you don't have good experience. And because you don't have good experience, you have a hard time. When the Bible says, God is our father. So I'm going to warn you today. Do not allow your past experiences with your earthly father to cloud, to impact your understanding of who God is. Can I tell you something? God is the father that you have always been longing for. He says, our father who is in heaven. God is the perfect father. He is not like us. What do I mean? In this same chapter, Jesus talks about a comparison between a good father and an earthly father, the perfect father and the earthly father. Look at what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7. Everybody read. If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. Everybody read. How much more will your father who is in heaven give what is good? I want you to know something today. God loves you. God is your perfect father. My wife and I, when we pray together, that's our pattern. We begin by saying, our Father. Notice, who art in heaven. That's the difference. In heaven means what? Our Father is almighty. Our Father has all the resources. Our Father knows everything about you. Our Father in heaven. Complete power, complete authority, and perfect. You know what happens in my heart? I find great comfort because I know what a father is. But God is better than me. Do you know when my children want to see me, they don't need appointment? They don't need to go through my secretary? They don't need to go through protocol? They can come into my room. They can come into my office. 
They can call me anytime. Why? Because father and child relationship. Is that what you think of when you pray? So I'm telling you, starting today, when you pray, you must now realize, God, you are my father. So how do you pray? Vertical first. I'm vertical. Always focus on God first. And then the horizontal will follow. If this vertical is not right, you got a problem. So our Father who art in heaven. Notice the next word. Hallowed. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed. Now what does that mean, hallowed? Hallowed is from this Greek word, hagiasmos. Halo means what? Hagiazo. From hagios. Holy. So that word, hallowed be your name. You are saying, Father, I want your name to be honored. I want your name to be so consecrated. You see, when you pray that prayer sincerely, you begin to ask your own life. You begin to question the way you speak, the way you talk to people. Does it honor our Father who is in heaven? Because if you pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, may your name be glorified. That means you have to cooperate. How can you ask God that his name be honored and your life and my life is living in such a way that it brings dishonor to God? I ask you right now, is there anything in your life? The way you treat your husband, the way you treat your wife, does it honor God? Children, parents, at home. Is the Lord honored in the way you speak to one another? Think about it. If you want to unleash God's power through prayer, you better know how to pray. It begins with, everybody, exercise again. Focus on God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Notice. The priority, may your name be honored. Question, are we honoring God in our life? Is that a good question to us? What is it you are doing now at home? You know why I always focus on the home? Because most of the time you are at home. Then next question, in your office. Next question, in school. Do people see Christ honored? The way you are speaking, the way you are behaving. See, friends, if you keep losing your temper, if you keep cursing, you are not going to bring honor to God. If you keep going late to the office, if you are always cheating, if you are always doing shortcut, my friend, you are not going to bring honor to our Father. Let's read this together. Your kingdom come. What does that mean? Your kingdom come. You see, the word kingdom is from this Greek word, basileia. That's where you have the word basilica. Now, the way it is translated, I praise God, they translate it as kingdom. But literally, it has to do with the reign of God, the rulership of God. God is not just a father. God is the king of kings. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to wake up now to realize how great is your father. He is the king of kings. And you are a prince and a princess. Therefore, you got to act as though you really believe that your father is the king and you are his child. And therefore, your life must reflect royalty. The world will say you are a nobody. The world will say you are a sinner. Yes, I'm a sinner, but I'm a sinner saved by grace. How do you become a child of God? The Bible tells us. You want to know? You see, some of you have a hard time praying because you know why? You cannot relate. God is not even my father. You don't even know God as your father. You know why? You have never encountered Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Look at John chapter 1 verse 12. You want to become a child of God? Everybody read as many as received him, Jesus. To them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. You see, the Bible says, to believe in his name, the name of Jesus, Yeshua, 
Yeshua means Savior. If you believe with all your heart that Jesus came as Savior, and he is the Son of God, and you trust him, and you surrender your life to him by faith, the Bible says you become his child. Now, you become his child in 1 John chapter 3. Everybody read. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us. It's from the Father that we would be called children of God. Friends, can you tell your neighbor you are a child of God? So when you pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. You are literally saying, Lord, I want you to come now and set up your kingdom. People don't realize Jesus talked more about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, than any other topic. Because the kingdom of God is real. Ladies and gentlemen, this world is not what it should be. The good news is one day the king of kings will come and he will correct all the wrongs and his kingdom will be set up and he will reign. And what will you do when he comes again? You know what you will do? The Bible says we are supposed to reign with him. Are you aware of that? You are going to reign with Jesus. The only problem is I pray you better make sure you are part of his kingdom. My friend, some of us don't really trust God. And that's why your Christian life is not growing. That's why I believe in prayer. You know why? Prayer unleashes God's power. Do you know prayer changes things? But the first thing it will change is you. Prayer changes. Yes or no? But the first thing it will change is you and me. Notice the connection between your kingdom come, Christ come, you be king over area, every area of my life. You be king. I surrender to you. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Implication on earth right now, there are some people who is not following the will of God. God is now telling us, you be his partner. You know what we should pray? This should be our prayer. Your kingdom come, Lord come now, your will be done. If you pray that prayer sincerely, then it means you have to do God's will. Yes or no? How can you say your will be done and then you don't obey God's will? You see, every day when my wife and I pray this, literally every day, that's our pattern. Our Father, we in heaven. So I stop. I say, Lord, I thank you. You are my Father. Then, 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 as I go through the pattern, I think of my schedule for the day. I think of who will I meet, what are the appointments, and I say, Lord, May your will be done. I'm going to meet this person. What is your will? How can I bring glory to your name? Be honest. Is God king? Is he Lord over your private life? What about your free time? Is God Lord over your free time? What kind of movies do you watch? I will now show you from the Old Testament an example of how to pray in the midst of crisis. In Second Chronicles, Chapter 20, you have the story of a good king by the name of King Jehoshaphat. After this, meaning Jehoshaphat was an amazing king. He led the spiritual revival in Judah. So after doing what is pleasing to God, something happened. The Bible tells us a great multitude is coming against you. In short, you have the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Edomites. They are surrounding the nation of Israel, and they are going to attack. This problem was not caused by the sin of Jehoshaphat. He was a good king. I'd like you to know, just because you have a problem, does not mean God is punishing you. No, no. Look at the next verse. Jehoshaphat was afraid and turned his attention to seek the Lord, proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. In short, is it okay to be afraid? Yes or no? 
It's normal. But do not stay fearful. When you have problems, remember horizontal. What must you do now when you pray? Everybody? Vertical. Ah, that's what he did. Jehoshaphat began to focus on God, to seek the Lord. So prayer, when you say focus on God when you pray, it is really seeking God. When you seek God, what does that mean? It means you want to know his will. You want to know his plans. It means you want to please him. That's the idea of seeking God. That's why I believe in prayer and fasting. So what did Jehoshaphat do? He proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Notice, this is his prayer. Are you not God in the heavens? Are you not ruler over all the kingdoms of the nations? Power and might are in your hand so that no one can stand against you. Notice, King Joseph gathered all the people in Judah, Jerusalem. And when he prayed, he did not begin with problems. He began with everybody. Who oh, God is? My friend, prayer will recalibrate your mind. If I have problems, just like you, just like me, be realistic. Do you get nervous? Suddenly you have problems. Yes or no? When I hear problems, when people come to me, Pastor, we have this problem. You know, when I hear problems, my heart begins to pump. Yes or no? You know, when you focus on problem, I guarantee you, what your mind focuses on will impact your behavior. So I suggest you pray. You recalibrate your thinking. When I pray, I think of who God is. Now, when you realize God is big and God is powerful, God is the ruler, God is sovereign, nothing is impossible with God, what happens to your problem? Does it get smaller? Yes or no? But if your God is tiny, your God is small, your God is a figment of your own wrong imagination, then I subscribe to you, I agree with you, you have every right to worry. You know why you should worry? Because you are helpless. But you know why I stop worrying? Because I refocus. I recalibrate my mind who God is. To focus on God, you have to think of what God has done. You have to know his word. Did you not, our God, oh, our God, did you not? See, he is now thinking of what God has done. You have to think of God's faithfulness in your life. Don't focus on the problem immediately. Focus on God. And he says, you drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people, and you gave this land to the descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever. They have lived in it and have built you a sanctuary. So God, you gave us this land. You promised Abraham. You gave this to us. And you drove away the Canaanites. And then read the next verse. Should evil come upon us, the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this house and before you, for your name is in this house, and cry, and you will hear and deliver us. This is a promise he is claiming. This promise is located in Second Chronicles chapter 6. When Solomon dedicated the temple, Jehoshaphat remembered what happened to his great-great-great-grandfather, about the promise of God. Look, this is the promise. Should evil come upon us, the sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this house and before you, for your name is in this house, and cry out to you in distress, you will hear and deliver us. So King Jehoshaphat is remembering what Solomon prayed and how God answered Solomon's prayer. God answered the prayer of Solomon. Lord, hear. When we're in trouble, hear us. Everybody read. Triumphant prayer is almost impossible where there is neglect of the study of the word of God. If you are ignorant of God's word, how can you claim his promises? Think about it. So prayer implies 
You need to seek God and you need to study His Word. So, Jehoshaphat knew the Bible. He knew what God has done. Notice the next verse. He's now telling God, you know, the Ammonites, you told us not to attack them. You told us not to attack the Ammonites, the Edomites, all of these people. See how they are rewarding us by coming to drive us out. Do you know what he's saying? He said, Lord, years ago, you did not let Israel invade these people. Now, you have to know, Jehoshaphat really knows the Bible. You did not allow Israel to destroy this nation. That is found in Deuteronomy. I will show you. That's why it's good to know the Bible. In the book of Deuteronomy, years ago, before Jehoshaphat times, God told Moses, do not harass Moab. Do not provoke them to war. I will not give you any of their land as a possession. And then God told Moses, when you come opposite the sons of Ammon, do not harass them or provoke them. I will not give you any of the land of the sons of the Ammonites as a possession. What God is telling Moses, I only give you the promised land, Canaan. Don't bother the property of the Ammonites, the Edomites. You know why? I'm not giving that to you. I'm only giving you the promised land where Israel is today. Israel is where God has promised Moses, this land, I'm going to give this to you. Okay, the land of Canaan. So, what is Jehoshaphat saying? Lord, you said this is our land, but look at what they're doing. They're attacking us. So, when you pray and you know God's will, you can pray with confidence. You know why? I love this promise. First John chapter 5. You know what is powerful prayer? Look at powerful prayer, unleashing God's power. First John chapter 5. This is the confidence which we have before him. If we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. Notice, you have confidence. If you ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us in whatever we ask, we know we have the request which we have asked from him. So ladies and gentlemen, do you believe that when you pray and you are praying in accordance to God's will, God will hear your prayer, yes or no? And can I tell you, when I study God's word, even my own desire changes. My desire becomes, I want to do what God wants me to do. I love this prayer. Oh, our God. Everybody read. Oh, our God. Will you not judge them? We are powerless before this great multitude who are coming against us, nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are on you. What is true prayer about helplessness? Everybody read. Prayer and helplessness are inseparable. Only the one who is helpless can truly pray. Your helplessness is your best prayer. It calls from your heart to the heart of God with greater effect than all your uttered pleas. Until God allows you to experience the reality of helplessness, brokenness, you may not really experience the power of God because your prayer is not yet from the heart. King Joseph had prayed from the heart. That's why, how do you pray from the heart, everybody? Focus on God first. And then when you focus on God, it recalibrates your mind. Now, many of you are not able to do that because you are self-sufficient. You have been trying to control your life. You have been trying to control circumstances. You are manipulating people. You are using your own way to solve problems. My friend, that kind of lifestyle will not cause you to be rested. You will always be anxious. You will always be angry. And you will always be agitated because you like to play God. But when you learn how to pray, you surrender. And I'm at peace. Because I'm not God. I cannot change people. But I know it's not my job to change people. Remember this quotation. Somebody once said, You honor God with what is within your control. 
What is outside your control, you surrender to God. There are many things outside my control. I entrust them to God. But those that are within my control, I make sure I honor God with my actions, with my choices. Let's keep on reading. All you that were standing before the Lord with their infants, their wives, and their children. Okay, can you see the picture? All of them waiting, standing, infants. And then the Bible tells us, in the midst of the assembly of the, the Spirit of the Lord came in the midst. Okay, while you are praying, my friend, I guarantee you something. When you learn to fast and pray and you just keep quiet, boom, you begin to hear God's voice. They waited. Jehoshaphat waited what to do. And then the Bible tells us the Spirit of God came to one of them and told them what to do. Thus says the Lord God to you, do not fear or be dismayed because this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's. Look at the battle plan. Tomorrow, not today, tomorrow, go down against them. Tomorrow, not today. What do you do tomorrow? Let's find out. You need not fight in this battle. Station yourself. This is a command. Station yourself. Stand. That's a command. See the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. O Judah, Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out to face them. The Lord is with you. Can you repeat this? The Lord is with you. Joseph had bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem, fell down before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. So to focus on God means you worship God even before your prayers are answered. That's how you pray. You focus on God. God first. Worship Him. The battle plan is so unorthodox. They rose early in the morning, so maga, they went out, Joseph had stood, listen to me, O Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem, put your trust in the Lord your God, put your trust in the prophets and succeed. Now trust God, trust his prophet, what he's telling us to do. Read the next verse. When he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who sang the Lord, those who praised him. They went out before the army and said, give thanks to the Lord, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Do you understand the battle plan? All right, tomorrow you face them. What will the army do? The army should be there. But who should be ahead of the army? The choir. And what should they be doing? Singing, praising. Now listen to me. Is that a good strategy or a bad strategy? My friend, very hard to listen and to wait on the Lord. You see, to focus on God when you pray, you've got to listen and wait. When we walk, we work, but when we pray, God works. Amen? When they began singing and praising, what, what did the Lord do? The Lord set ambushes. God's power was unleashed. When was it unleashed? When they began praying, and God told them what to do? To sing and to worship. And when you begin to sing and worship, that's called obedience. When you give thanks, God's power is unleashed. Many of us will not sing, will not praise until God answers our prayer. Completely wrong. You do the opposite. When you pray, you fast, and then you thank God in advance. It is the same principle in Philippians chapter 4. That's how you should pray. Everybody read this together. Be anxious. For nothing, but in everything. Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I do not know how to explain how many times the peace of God has overshadowed my soul and my heart. I don't know how to explain. The Bible tells us, when Jehoshaphat and his people came the next day, what did God do? Do you remember? After they prayed, what did God do? God did something, right? Destroyed all of the enemies. After destroying all the enemies, they got the shock of their lives. The next day when they went there, they got bonus. And upon bonus, look, they found 
much among them, including goods, garments, valuable things, which they took for themselves, more than they could carry. And they were there three days taking the spoil because there was so much. Is God good or not? Amazing. Then read the next verse. What did God do? The Bible tells us, in the fourth day, they assemble in the valley of Beraka. The word Beraka means what? Bless. God is giving. Blessing. And then read the next verse. Every man of Judah came back with joy. Read. The Lord had made them to rejoice. But not only that. When you focus on God, when you pray, God gets honored. The Bible says the dread of God was on all the kingdoms of the lands when they heard that the Lord had fought. God is glorified when you pray properly. The word dread means the awe, the awesomeness of God. People knew God is involved. You know what's my prayer? You make your life prayerful. So that when something happens, God gets the glory, not you. Let's bow our heads. If God has spoken to you, and you feel like you want to learn to pray more, you want to learn how to pray more, you are committed to pray more, I want you to quietly pray wherever you are right now. You pray. Whatever your problem right now, I want you to pray to the Lord. Wherever you are, you just pray silently. You tell God your problem today. And then you thank Him in advance. The verse that I want to tell you is this. When you thank God in advance, the Bible says the peace of God will come upon you. The peace of God will come upon you. And that's what you need today, the peace of God. As you pray, there may be some of you today, you see you say, I'm not sure God is my father. I, I don't have a relationship with God. I like to have that personal relationship with God. If you want a relationship with God, you want to be God as your heavenly father, will you quietly raise your hands? I'll pray for you. Anybody else? Yes. You are not sure God is your father. You want God to be your father. Higher, wherever you are right now. God is not yet your father, but you want God to be your father. Raise your hands higher. Those hands who are raised up today, right now, wherever you are, raise your hands. I want you to pray that prayer with me, something like this. Lord Jesus, I'm not even sure I'm your child. I've been rebellious. Today I surrender my life. Jesus, come into my life. I ask you to be my Savior. I put my faith in you. I trust you as my Lord and Savior. Change my heart. Lord Jesus, I thank you for today's message. I pray you give all of us a desire to pray. Because prayer is seeking you. Prayer is intimacy with you. Teach us how beautiful and how delightful it is to spend time with you. I pray this for myself and I pray this for the entire CCF and those who are watching us. That we become men and women who love to spend time with you, who love to wait upon you, just to worship you, the beauty of your presence. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen and amen. God bless.